All right, welcome to uh, 3.2, the remainder theorem, and that's on pages 118 to 125 in your textbook. Our curriculum outcome is we're still on 30.10, which we're going to demonstrate understanding of polynomials and polynomial functions of degree greater than 2, limited to polynomials of degree less than or equal to 5, and limited to integral coefficients. Our lesson objectives, there's four of them. First is to make a connection between finding the factors of a number and finding the factors of a polynomial. Second, to understand what we call the remainder theorem. Third, to learn how to long divide using polynomials. And fourth, to learn how to use synthetic division. So first thing we need to do is we need to remember all about uh, long division with numbers. So we're going to be long dividing with polynomials. The method is the same. So the first thing that you do when you're long dividing with numbers is you check to see how many times 4 goes into 26. Or I prefer to think of it as how many 4s um, will go into 26 evenly. And we know that answer is 6. So we get a 6. We have 6 times 4, which is 24. And then if you recall, we subtract those two numbers. We get 25, because we pull down that 5. Now, we say, how many times does 4 go into 25? Well, it goes in evenly 6 times. 6 times 4, again, is 24. We're left with a remainder of 1. So what we're saying is, if 265 is divided by 4, you get as an answer 66, and you get 1 left over. And that is 1 out of 4. So you get 66 and a quarter. Now the way that we write this is really important because we're going to be writing polynomials the same way. So the process uh, that we just used for long division can be applied to polynomials as well and the result that we get is also written in the same way that we just wrote the result for 265 divided by 4. So here's our example. We've got polynomial x squared plus 5x plus 6 and we've got the binomial x minus 1. So when we're dividing, we ask ourselves, what do I need to multiply x by to get really close to x squared? Well, and the answer to that is x. And then I take this number up top, which just happens to be a variable this time, x, and I multiply it by x minus 1. And in doing so, I get x squared minus 1x. So I multiply it by both terms. Now, I subtract, just like we did before. x squared minus x squared is 0, so we don't have to write anything there. And we've got 5x minus a negative x. Well, 5x minus a negative x gives us 6x. And if you remember, we pull down the next term, which happens to be a 6. Now we ask ourselves the same question. We say, what do I have to multiply x by to get 6x? And hopefully you understand that the answer there is 6. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Again, we subtract these two things. So I get 6x minus 6x, which is 0. I get 6 minus a negative 6, which gives me a 12. So to write this, we know that x squared plus 5x plus 6, when you divide that thing by x minus 1, you get x plus 6. But we also get that remainder, which is 12. And that is still divided by the x minus 1. So at this point in time, you might be wondering, what's the point? Like, why would we need to divide polynomials? Well, we use long division to factor polynomials. So remember that we're talking about polynomials that have high degrees. So we're talking about polynomials like x to the fourth or x to the five. Um, and we need to be able to factor those types of polynomials. And because uh, we are limited to what we learned in grade 11. Inspection, decomposition, and difference of squares just doesn't work. Those only work generally with an x squared with a degree of 2. So lucky for you and lucky for everybody, there's also another way to do long division, and it is by a process called synthetic division. And the good thing about synthetic division is that it allows us to get the same result, and we don't have to worry about any variables. We can just worry about numbers, and it uses way less space. So in synthetic division, there are some specific steps that we need to follow. We're going to use our previous example and see if we can come up with the same answer. Now let's remember that the answer there, the remainder was 12. So let's see if we can get to the same thing. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a long L and we're going to place the coefficients of the polynomial within the L. So all that means is we're going to draw an L like this. And we're going to take the coefficients of the polynomial. So there's a 1, there's a 5, and there's a 6. So, so far, so good. Now, if you consider your binomial in the form of x minus a, so here we have x minus 1, we're going to take a and place it outside of your L. We're, note that we have to change the number, or the sign of the number, sorry. So this negative 1 now becomes a positive 1. And I do this so we don't actually have to subtract. What we're going to do is add. So our third step, we're going to pull down the first number. So that's the 1. We're going to pull it down. And we're going to multiply this number by a, so 1 times 1 and we're going to put the result in the second column right here. We're going to add the two numbers together in this column. That gives us a 6 and place the result underneath. And we're going to repeat our steps. We're going to multiply this number 6 by 1. So 1 times 6. And we're going to move it up over here. So that becomes a 6. And then we repeat the adding step. So we get 12. And we would continue this process till we run out of columns. Now let's take a look at what we've got. Here's our remainder, right here. Same remainder that we had when we did long division. Now this takes way less time and way less space. But what are these two things then? If you remember our result from before, when we had x squared plus 5x plus 6 being, this is just another way of writing it, divided by x minus 1, we got a result that was x plus 6 plus 12 divided by x minus 1. Well, here's our remainder, we said. And this, or these two numbers right here, are the coefficients on these two terms. So this would be your constant. This would be x. So x plus 6, 1x, plus 6, plus our remainder of 12. So a few key things about synthetic division. Um, if your polynomial is missing a term, make sure that you insert a zero as a placeholder. Make sure your polynomial is arranged in descending order. Uh, remainder of zero means that your binomial happens to be a factor of that polynomial, and that's really key in upcoming lessons. And a remainder other than zero means that your binomial is not a factor. It means that that binomial does not go into your polynomial evenly. So here's an example, um, to keeping these things in mind. It says use synthetic division to find the remainder when 11x minus 4x to the 4 minus 7 is divided by x minus 3. So the first thing we have to take into account is that this is not in descending order. We need it to be in descending order. So we need to have negative 4x to the 4 first because it has the highest degree plus 11x and minus 7. The next thing is we are going to use our synthetic division, so we make our L. We put in these numbers. We also have to leave room for placeholders. There's no x to the cubed term, x to the cubed. There's no x cubed term, so we put in a zero. There's no x squared term, so we put in a zero. There is an x term, so we can write in an 11. And there is a constant, so that's negative 7. And remember with synthetic division that we take this binomial, x minus 3, and we put in the opposite sign. So now it's just the synthetic division process. We pull down the first number, negative 4. We multiply 3 by negative 4. We get negative 12. We add 0 and negative 12 together. We get negative 12. We take 3. We multiply it by negative 12. We get negative 36. We add 0 and negative 36 together. We're, we still have negative 36. We multiply 3 by 36. That gives us negative 108. We add 11 and negative 108 together, and we should get 97, negative 97. Then we multiply 3 by negative 97, and we should get negative 291. And when we're doing that, then we add them together. Negative 7 and negative 291 is negative 298 there is our remainder. Now that, I think, is a lot easier than trying to do long division to find your remainder. And this remainder is key. It really comes into play in future lessons. So that brings us to the title of the lesson, which is the remainder theorem. 
Um, it, the remainder theorem states that if a polynomial P of X is being divided by a binomial X minus A, that's what we've been doing, then if you need to find your remainder, you simply have to find P of A. So if you remember function notation, this should make sense to you. Um, let's take a look at an example. It says use the remainder theorem to find the remainder when 11X minus 4X to the fourth minus seven is divided by X minus three. So this notation right here, P of A, just means that we take the value for a and we plug it into our p function. Well, we know the value for a, the binomial, if it's written like x minus a, then a would be positive three in this case. So we plug in a positive three, we find p of three. And that is equal to 11 times three minus four times three to the power of four minus seven. So 11 times three is 33 minus four, three to the power of four is 81. So we've got 33 minus 324 minus seven. And when you do the math, you end up with negative 298. And that's what we got by using synthetic division last slide. So in summary, we know that there's a specific way to write the result of a polynomial being divided by a binomial. Um, there are also three different ways to find the remainder when a polynomial is being divided by a binomial. All three of them are important to know, so you need to know each of them, and they'll each come in handy at some point in the near future. There's long division, there's synthetic division, and then there's the remainder theorem. All three of those things are quite important, or else we wouldn't have talked about them today. And that's it. Um, if you know those three things, you'll be good to go. Try the assignment, page 124 to 125, and good luck.